shot with black and white film from when I was about 8 to 12 years old. Pretty much slices of life, nothing crazy, just snapped everything I could. I didn't learn to develop in a dark room until high school. Unfortunately, I don't use this anymore, and the photos I took with it are buried somewhere just waiting to be found. It's long overdue for some maintenance, but I still keep it around as a reminder of how my interest in all of this started. This isn't even mine. It's been on loan for my best bud since we were kids. We're mostly just shooting the shit, but we started learning a little about composition, shutter speed, and editing, that we didn't care to apply much of what we learned. It was really just about getting out there and experimenting. Looking back on some of the footage now, I'm surprised at how much we got right when it came down to the actual shots. If only we studied lighting and writing more, Still, it's the best kind of film school you could get, especially when you have more people encouraging you to just do it rather than bringing your efforts down. The Vixia was my first break into HD video, but it was still used for concepts and learning. I had it for about a year before realizing that more creatives were switching over to DSLRs for video. A lot of the same problems I had with the Sony Digi-8 were still a problem here. You couldn't really get that shallow depth of field, and importing and working with the footage was incredibly annoying. My Dell laptop at the time always seemed like it was ready to explode whenever I tried editing with the Vixia footage. But overall, it was an exercise in patience. It took a lot of odd jobs, but I was eventually able to purchase this camera while I was still in college. It became the main workhorse for both photos and video. I carried it around with me constantly, often annoying friends and capturing every single moment like it was the last. A lot of short films were shot on this, even after college. I learned how to edit photos digitally through this camera, and it's become a real time capsule of sorts. It surprised me how good this camera was for my needs and budget at the time. Everyone else had either expensive Nikons or the Canon 5Ds, but there was something about this camera that kind of proved it wasn't so much about the camera itself, at least at the time, but more about how you used it. In another video, I explained how a photography gig essentially took me out of things creatively for a few years. My iPhone 7 Plus at the time still scratched whatever itches I had. I shot a lot of photos on that phone and later iPhones, and even shot two short films with the iPhone 8 Plus. It's a tricky device to master with a lot of peripherals needed to really get the best out of it. It's not impossible to use this as your main camera, but requires more investments and time than you think. It's not as simple as a point-and-shoot. This camera got me into mirrorless photography, and I needed something new as the T2i was starting to show its age and gave me a couple of problems. I intended to shoot a short film or two with this, but the pandemic got in the way. The camera itself was decent enough for 1080p video, but the autofocus was dreadful for photography, despite producing better images than the T2i. Unfortunately, this camera was just a stepping stone for the next two cameras. This is the video camera I had always dreamed about having, ever since messing around with the Sony Digi-8. It gives me everything I need in stunning 4K, it kind of has the same frame of a mirrorless SLR, but without the viewfinder, making peripheral customizations easy and seemingly endless. I've only scratched the surface with it, and while another version of this camera may be coming out within the next few years, I see this as my next T2i, as far as being the main workhorse for years to come. It's already been used for a short film and a short documentary, with more projects planned in the near future. Having the R5 started as more of a flex than anything. 
I still had the a7 II, but as I said, the autofocus was terrible on it and I wanted to have the flexibility to really crop and edit my photos with total control without compromising on quality. The R5 became more than just a flex after I started doing photography full time. It saved work multiple times with its blazing fast autofocus, perfect for event photography, and the details I get with it are insane. It's been a huge leap forward for me and has taught me more than I thought I knew. I don't use it for videography except for testing. It shoots 8K video and could certainly be used the same way as the T2i, as far as being a main camera for photos and video, but I'm fortunate to have two options for both mediums.